coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers. Viking Engine Symposium proved powerful. Petition demands solutions to lack of ultralight instructors. Rotax announces 2024 fly-in tour dates. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Viking Engine Symposium proved powerful. ANN had the pleasure to drop in for a part of the 6th Annual Viking Engine Workshop, which turned out to be crammed with current engine flyers and a number of folks getting ready to do so. Nearly 80 people were hosted by the Viking organization, who explained their engine lines and answered a number of questions, providing extensive insight into the rationale for their engine line, which has grown considerably over the years to include a 90-horsepower Rotax 912 replacement to the powerful 195-horsepower turbocharged monster that was recently joined by a new 140-horsepower mill and a 175-horsepower power plant to boot. The workmanship on display was impressive. There are over 1,500 of these engines flying now, with Zenith Flyers owning nearly 1,000 of them and increasing acceptance being shown from the Rands and Glassdark camps, among others. Several birds flew in, some from considerable distances, and the uncowling and displaying of each installation gathered quite a crowd in short order, as builders compared notes, tips, and shortcuts for their projects. It turned out to be an illuminating visit, and we're looking forward to heading back down to Viking soon to gain some operational experience with as many of their engines as we can. More info to follow. And after the break, attendance still free at September's renamed Midwest Aviation Expo. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm Barry Canutula, the CEO of King Schools, and you're invited to join me, John and Martha, and everyone at King Schools as we celebrate 50 years of helping pilots like you achieve their aviation goals. Until February 15th, you can save up to $250 on select King Schools courses. Just go to kingschools.com slant 50 years for all the details. But hurry, these savings expire on February 15th. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Attendance still free at September's renamed Midwest Aviation Expo. The 16th annual Midwest Aviation Expo is on for next September, running from the 5th to 7th. The event is held at the Mount Vernon Outland Airport in Mount Vernon, Illinois, open to all comers in the aeronautical scene no matter their niche. That being said, the Expo has traditionally catered to the light aviation scene, offering more affordable smiles per mile than other markets of aircraft. Midwest Expo management promises that despite the growth, they'll retain its distinctive hometown feel show that it has in the past. Hartzell Propeller extends discount to Recreational Aviation Foundation. Hartzell Propeller is looking to bolster support for the RAF, the Recreational Aviation Foundation, and is extending a $1,000 discount to those who support it. The discount will affect Hartzell's biggest and best sellers in the backcountry bush plane lineup like the Voyager, the Pathfinder, and the Trailblazer. The Voyager's three-blade scimitar design is well suited for bush Cessnas like the 180, 182, 185, and 206. The Pathfinder's three-blade carbon composite build makes it a natural fit for lighter, sportier aircraft. The Trailblazer is probably the most versatile of the offered props, with two- and three-blade applications available for a legacy brand. 
IAC looking for new executive director. If you are looking for a very interesting gig and are qualified, Stephen Kurtzon, International Aerobatic Club Executive Director, left the EAA IAC team on January 31st, and IAC needs a replacement. Stephen has answered the call to return as pastor within the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Previous to coming into the IAC job, he had served in pastoral ministry for 36 years and is responding to a tremendous need for pastors in his denomination. AMA pleased with FAA Reauthorization Act containing Model AC provisions. The U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation passed the Bipartisan Senate FAA Reauthorization Act of 2023. The legislation includes several provisions to strengthen safety standards and oversight at the FAA and responds to safety concerns from recent aviation accidents and near misses. The AMA Government Affairs team confirmed that AMA's amendment was included in the bill's manager's package, which will ultimately become part of the final Senate bill. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Petition demands solutions to lack of ultralight instructors. Another aviation-oriented change.org petition has surfaced. This time, the petition addresses the serious deficit in our ultralight instruction ranks and seeks the FAA's action in fixing this serious matter. Started by Jim Farr, the chairman of the EAA Ultralight and Light Sport Advisory Council, who has been, quote, tirelessly advocating for the ultralight aviation community's needs and concerns. The most pressing issue we face as a community is a severe shortage of dedicated ultralight aircraft instructors. Prior to the inception of the light sport rules, there were approximately 8,000 dedicated instructors providing ultralight-specific training across the U.S. Immediately after these rules came into effect, this number dropped to zero and has not recovered in any meaningful way to support transitioning pilots and new pilots wishing to take up the sport. This is a critical safety shortfall, evidenced by the numbers of GA pilots who crash on landing due to inappropriate responses to low mass slash high drag aircraft landing characteristics, and by the significant number of new pilots seeking readily available and convenient training without success." End quote. And after these messages, Rotax announces 2024 fly-in tour dates. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Rotax announces 2024 fly-in tour dates. Rotax is taking its fly-in on the road, moving beyond its historical stomping grounds of Vels, Austria. The 2024 fly-in world tour will see them touch down in Australia, Argentina, and Canada, allowing more of their international market to get in on the fun. Each event will see keynote speakers, food trucks, manufacturer demonstrations, vendors, dinner with music, and more. Canadians looking to learn more about their Rotax mills can sit in on presentations that give a rundown of just exactly what makes a 916 IS different from a 915 IS, and Argentines can get a front row seat to a Red Bull air show. Last year, Brazil broke the mold for an outside fly-in, bringing out almost 200 enthusiasts in a market that didn't always come off as a hub for light sport fans. 
That's been a good indicator for Rotax to continue on, and its roster of tour stops shows that it's earnest about spreading the fandom beyond the same old circuit of air shows and fly-ins. The first will be held in Australia April 12th through 14th, the second in Austria August 23rd and 24th, the third in Canada September 7th, and the last in Argentina October 26th and 27th. Each airfield and fly-in will sport its own distinct approach, instructions, and charts. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching. 